Hi everyone, welcome to Python for Academics. In this video, I will show you how you can generate publication ready diagrams like this one using Python. So such diagrams could, for example, be used inside of the documentation of your software. You can upload it, for example, to GitHub into a readme file to make it kind of a nice uh, documentation of your directory structure or if you're writing a publication about your software, you can include such a diagram inside of your manuscript to explain, again, the directory structure of your software. And for the purpose of this uh, video, I generated uh, this directory called my library. If we look inside of that directory, I've got two directories inside, one called code, one called docs. Uh, if we go, for example, to the code directory, uh, you can see that we have this SRC and tutorials. We can go to SRC, which is a directory that contains the Python uh, files and tutorials, for example, contains a couple of Jupyter notebooks. Uh, so we are going to generate this diagram based on that directory, uh, my library. And in order to do that in Python, we're going to need this graphviz library, which you can install simply, simply through pip install graphviz. Uh, and in this exercise, we're also going to need the OS library. Uh, so I'm importing those two at the beginning. And now the directory that we'll work on for which we'll generate this diagram uh, is uh, is like this. Uh, so just run this cell. And here's just a couple of variables that uh, we'll use to color the elements of, uh, of this diagram. And that's the font that we'll use. Uh, so that's kind of predefined over here, but you don't have to worry about this for the moment. And so now we have to generate this diagram structure uh, using the graphviz library. And in order to do that, it's best that we create a function that creates this graph for us. And then we'll call a render function on that graph uh, to create an actual image uh, of, this, of this diagram. So the function that uh, we are creating, let's call it create graph, uh, will take two arguments. The first one is the directory for which we're, we're actually uh, computing this graph. And the second argument will be the graph itself, which I initialized to none. And you'll see in a moment why we need the second argument. And this function in general will return the graph, the generated graph, which is an object of a special class that comes from this graphviz library. So if graph is uh, none, so it would be kind of the first time when we run this function. If it's if if the graph still hasn't been generated, then we actually want to generate it, and we use uh, the graphviz uh, library, and we instantiate an object of a graph class. Uh, so this gives us the the basic kind of graph structure. There's also another class which is called digraph uh, for directed graphs. But in this case, we do not need a directed graph. So I'm just using this class. And this class takes as an argument uh, something called engine, which is basically the style for uh, this graph. Uh, we'll use the style, which is called dot. You c there's also another style, which is called neato, which kind of makes a circular pattern from this. So it will put my library in the center and the other items around it. But in this case, uh, we'll just stick with the dot engine. So that would be kind of the first thing that this function is doing. It's actually initializing the graph. And now we'll have to specify the directory name, the starting one, uh, which uh, is going to be just the last part of this uh, directory path. And in order to extract that last bit, uh, we can use os.path.base name and call it on the directory. So this, this function extracts the last kind of uh, element of, of that directory, the whole path. 
And now we have to generate the first node on the graph, which is the first directory. Uh, so that node will represent a directory and um, we give it two arguments. So the first one is the, di is the directory name, which will serve as a name by which we refer to that particular node. And then uh, in the case uh, of, uh, of those names being whole paths, it's also useful to actually uh, set this uh, variable label uh, to, to change the label displayed on the graph to something shorter. Uh, in this case, it's, it's still the directory name because we've already stripped that, uh, that whole path, uh, the last element. So this graph.node uh, generates the first node, which is a directory. So the first one, for example, my library, that would be the first, uh, di the first node generated as we call this function. And now what we need to do is to loop over all of the items that are in the present in a given directory. So to do that, we'll use a, a for loop and we're going to loop over items so for item in, in os.list dir and we use the current directory. So for each item found in the given directory, uh, we're only going to be interested in items that are, um, that are folders or files that do not start with a dot. So we, we're not interested in dot files. You can see that I have a couple of those in, uh, in this directory structure, but I do not want to list those dot ds and so on. Uh, so we're going to check if item zero. So if the first, um, if the first character in this item string is not equal to dot only, then will we actually execute some action. And now we can uh, specify the path to that particular item, which is going to be os.path.join. And this will be the directory plus, oh, sorry, the directory comma the item. So that will give us the, the absolute path to the current item. And now we'll, we're going to have to make two choices here uh, inside of this for loop. So it could be that once we enter a given directory, there's another directory inside of it, which as yes, you can see, it is sometimes the case uh, in this directory structure. Or it could be that we enter a directory and an item is a file and the file is kind of a terminal point on that graph. So now we have to account for these two options. So the first one will be uh, whenever uh, we encounter a directory, we're going to execute some action. And then whenever we encounter a file, we're going to execute some action. So this will handle this with if statements. So if if os.path is uh, dir, so if, if the item is a directory, path to item, then we'll do something, we'll handle that as a directory. And else, so any other uh, cases must mean that uh, an item is a file and we'll handle that as a file. So if that item is a directory, what we can do is actually call that function again on that item. Uh, but we have to change the directory over here, which would be path to item. And now the graph has already been generated. So we actually pass that graph to that function. And you can see that now why I included that graph as another argument. So if this uh, item is a directory, we call this function again. So we create this kind of recurrent uh, structure in that function. And this, uh, this item, this directory will be added as a node over here. Uh, so now the last thing that we need to do is to actually connect directory with the next directory with this line. And to do that, we can call graph.edge 
function, which allows us to connect two nodes of, on a graph. And there's two arguments that we need to pass to that function. The first one is the uh, name of the uh, of the node where the edge starts, and the second one is the name of the uh, node at which to which the edge is leading to. So that we always the path base name again we strip the uh, the path to just include this last kind of directory name because that's how we decided to handle directories um, all right so this handles uh, uh, directories this this handles folders and else we need to handle files so we can simply add a node being a file path to item and we can label it as an item so give it a short name as an item and also we need to connect um, the file to its corresponding directory so all of the files uh, need to be connected to the directory in which they sit so this graph.edge over here will create all of those lines over here so we give it the uh, the name of the directory from which the edge is coming from and then path to item is the name of the of the file to which they lead and this is pretty much it uh, so now all we need to do is to actually call that function and generate this graph so we'll do create graph directory and now that the graph has been generated, we can call this function render and actually visualize uh, this, this um, diagram as, a, as an image. So we give it an, a file name, so maybe directory structure. Uh, we can format, specify the format, so you can save it as SVG, for example, to have it uh, in a nice vector graphics, you can save it as a PDF, uh, but maybe here we'll just save it as a PNG. And we'll also set this cleanup to true as we're plotting. Uh, so now, if we wait a little bit, you can see that this image has been generated. And uh, when I open it, you can see that it correctly populated that uh, directory structure. So now all that remains really is to make it look nicer in whatever way you would like. So in this exercise, I'll show you how we can achieve this uh, kind of style uh, for this for this diagram. And it's pretty simple to do now, just adding a couple of uh, extra options. So for example, this graph object has this function attr which allows us to set different attributes uh, so for example uh, we can uh, we can change the diagram to go from left to right instead of from top to to bottom uh, so we can do that by setting this rank dir to lr so from left to right uh, you could also change the background color uh, to transparent that's useful if you're saving the diagram to uh, PDF, for example, or SVG file. Uh, so now if I uh, rerun this code, you can see that now the, uh, the graph flows from left to right instead of top to bottom. And also, if you, if you want your lines to be straight lines, orthogonal lines and not splines, you could also uh, change that over here by setting yet another attribute which is called splines and we can set this to ortho so that will change all of those lines to orthogonal lines and now we can change the way that these nodes uh, look like so for example directories all of the directories we can actually give them the directory icon and all of the files we can give them a file icon uh, so we can do that over here for for every node that we have uh, we so this this one will always be a directory so we can specify shape folder um, and 
we can specify the color for the outline of that folder and now this is where these variables come into play so folder outline color that's the color i i defined for this outline and you can also set the thickness of the outline uh, with the parameter pen width which is not a very intuitive parameter uh, name and moreover you set it as a string although it could also be an integer um, so that would set the line thickness uh, we can also set the color of the interior uh, of of that folder uh, so first we need to set the style to filled and then fill color we can specify uh, it to for example this color and we can also set the font name to font so that will give us this this nice font which i found work pretty nice for this graph so now if we rerun this you can see that all of these uh, directories uh, all of the folders got this nice style so we can do the same thing for uh, the files so now shape will be note that will give us this uh, file icon pen width we can set it to three uh, we can set the color for the outline uh, file outline color which i think is the same for all of the items and then style we can set it to filled and fill color we can take it from here and also change the font name to font so now if i rerun this again you can see that the style for the files have changed and the last thing we can do is to change the thickness of the edges uh, so this we can do over uh, here we can set the pen width to three and color we can set it to uh, edge color i think it was called okay all right oh we forgot about these edges yeah so they are defined over here it's the same thing uh, i can actually copy that so that's the pen width and the edge color all right so now the diagram looks uh like uh like this template over here you can save it as svg and upload it to your manuscript, for example, or to your GitHub documentation.